Welcome, friends. Welcome to another edition of More Bad News, brought to you, as always, by Camel Cigarettes. Take the Camel's Challenge, smoke Camel's for 30 days, and see for yourself what a difference Camel's can make in your life. You'll know why more doctors smoke Camel's and why people would walk a mile for a Camel. Well, folks, it's been another week of very bad news. Last week, we learned that the Russians may be planning to put a nuclear weapon in space. It has been speculated that they want the weapon was designed to be an electromagnetic pulse generator, which essentially would wipe out our satellite systems. It's not bad enough to have the Russian nukes in space. Last week, we learned from Donald Trump that there's a nuke that if you dropped it on New York, South Carolina would be taken out. Now, that's a terrifying weapon, <clears throat> but no worries. A word from Trump and this imaginary threat would disappear. And after the key Republican witness against Biden in the impeachment was arrested by the FBI for collusion with Russian intelligence, Fox News pointed out that it's very suspicious that everyone who comes out after the Biden crime family ends up in jail. But the most astonishing news last week was from the Alabama Supreme Court, the decision declaring frozen embryos to be children. My God, get those kids out of the freezer. Uh, the decision has brought all IVF activity in the state uh, to a halt. I, I, know, I know how these parents feel. I've been there. Uh, I know how cruel this decision is. Uh, you know, I've been through this. You put all of your hopes and dreams and, and a huge amount of cash down because you are hoping that you'll be able to have a child. Uh, so having been through it, I know how much heartache has been generated by the Supreme Court uh, decision. And God help us if the United States Supreme Court takes up this case. So the news affected me deeply. You may recall that in September, I reported on the ethnic cleansing of 130,000 Armenians from Azerbaijan. Those people's lives will never be the same. They have joined the millions of refugees who have been displaced from their homes by climate and violence. Here again, I've been there. Having taught genocide for decades, I've listened to hundreds, perhaps thousands of interviews with refugees in places like Chad and Bangladesh. In the UN refugee camps in the desert in eastern, on the eastern border of Chad, where there are 400,000 refugees from Sudan, I vividly remember an interview with a mother and her children. Her eldest son had gone to join the military to fight against the Sudanese government, and she feared that her other children would go that way as well. She had no hope, but she had children to take care of as best she could. The Shaw Archives in California sent interviewers to the camps in Bangladesh to interview survivors of the Myanmar genocide. And all this suffering continues abated. One, on a more personal note, it was a very hard week for me. It started innocently enough, a member of the board of the Museum of Psychology, which the largest repository of material in the history of psychology in the world, uh, they noticed that my ISA archives was no longer up. And I told them that the university had, had taken it down shortly after my suit against the university terminated my career there. And he wanted to know if I was willing to have the archives, uh, donate the archives to the museum. Again, the world's largest repository of material on the history of psychology. So, uh, you know, for most of my life, I've been looking for a place to put my archives. You know, you, you, you dedicate your life, you, you collect all this material, you, you know, it's valuable research material, you want it to be sustained. And I had been in negotiations with the university, with Ferris, to take the material. Um, and thank God that never came through. Um, but um, I'm realizing now that you know, engaging with people who think that there's a future disturbs my trench it, you know, because it tickles my ego. So if we had a future, there'd be no better place for the archives, but we don't have a future. And I, I wouldn't give up these materials. I, I said, actually I send them the digital stuff that, that can go up right away. But this stuff is, you know, it doesn't go until I'm gone. I'm, you know, it's part of me. I wouldn't let go of it. And by the time I'm gone, there's not going to be any time left. So uh, I'll proceed as if there's a future, but it really is something disorienting about it all. 
And as if to add insult to injury, uh, I came to the decision this morning that I'm going to have to give up alcohol entirely. You know, folks, I come from an alcohol consuming culture. Jews use alcohol to sanctify the Sabbath. They use it at bris milah. They use it for, you know, whenever my family gathered together, the first thing everybody would do would be get out the schnapps. For years now, my tolerance for alcohol has been on the decline. Last week, I had to give up the short shots for vodka. Just the vodka was too much. This job is, I only had a little bit of wine. And the little bit of wine didn't go well. I didn't sleep. Friday night, Saturday night, it just disturbed my sleep. So I realized I just can't tolerate it anymore. I'm sure I've mentioned this before. My brother, uh, Rabbi Mailer, uh, Peter Mailer, my brother, told me that we don't die all at once, but we lose bits and pieces of ourselves as we go. And that's clearly what's happening. So uh, we live in hope is what my father used to say. And uh, I will leave you here with that, hoping that we'll be back next week with another edition of more bad news.